it's all I've got so I have to be thrown with a bit more deliberation really than the little ones. Pressure on the inside changes the shape quite a bit. I'm very pleased with that one, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit wet, but probably do it on that one, I think. When were these done? These were done a couple of days ago, so they'd be just been wrapped up to keep them damp because uh, they can dry out very quickly, really. I need to make a little base just to sit it on. Surplus clay which has dried a bit. It's leather hard, cheese hard, so a bit easier to work on than when you've just shaped it. So I just sit that on there, get it right in the middle. And I can just skim a bit of clay off the surface all these trimmings get used again they'll soak down in water and be mixed up and the older the clay is the better it is to work with this is some quite old clay I've got at the moment recycled when you say old how old is it? Uh, well three or four months so that's ready to have a handle put on. I don't know. Might be a bit too squashy, but I can give it a try and stretch it out into a long strip. And just how you hold your hands can change the profile of the handle quite a bit. I quite like to have three ridges in the handle so with your thumb you can just put ridges in. I like my handles to be fairly sturdy. And for this one I need quite a big handle. Slip, it's thick slip. Water and clay just works like glue. Just wriggle the handle a little bit to get it to stick. Just the right amount of moisture on it should be all right. So we're just stretching it out to get it to the right length. be sponged a little bit later on when it's dried off. This is slip, it's liquid clay mixed with water and it all settles to the bottom so I've got to get it all stirred up. It's a messy business but it's fun. It's terrific pleasure and especially the bit on the wheel. So I've got to dip this now. Right. get a coating of lighter coloured clay and that will dry off in about 10 minutes and I'll be able to stick the sprig decoration onto it and so it's just to make there. decoration to go on the mugs. 
more cleanly but this one's quite worn now so that's why I have to just cut round the little jimps. How many of these would you aim to do a day? Oh, um, I do a hundred mugs in a day. Um, they take a little bit longer to decorate and stick the handles on. But the bit on the wheel, the throwing, usually takes about a day to do a hundred. Plaster sprig moulds, so the clay won't really stick in there too much because it's soaking up a little bit of moisture from the clay. For some reason it only seems to work with this knife, it's just got the right amount of spring in it to get the thing to come out. I've tried all sorts of different knives but just this one. This is uh, white earthenware and it makes a better background for coloured glazers which will be painted on top of these butterflies. They're going to be used on mugs and jugs and I'll paint the colours on at a later stage. tapered where the wings are so that um, it, it eases out of the mould. So I'll pick it up like this. I flex it into shape and then I stick it on. Moisture's pretty critical really on these parts of it. So stick it on there, squidge it on very carefully, squishing all the spines down. They're going to have a little bit skimmed off just to make them level and also put my signature on. I'm at Willow Farm on Sunday for their annual farm fair so um, I'm trying to get some stuff turned out for the weekend but I don't know if I'm going to do it, it's, it's getting a bit tight now. <laughs> They're completely dry now so but they could go there as well upside down so that the base dries out as fast as the rim dries out finishing off the base before they dry out get it right in the middle again Sure, the base is flat and a bit lighter in weight. How, how do you check then, that it is flat? Um, well, you just know it's flat, really. If you hold the tool in the same place, it will go flat. I'm cutting it slightly concave actually so that it just sits on the edge of the base and then sign it. Fraction. The pots have been dried for five days, so they're ready to go in the kiln. They're quite brittle at this stage, like a piece of chocolate, so they need to be fired up to a thousand degrees to make them stronger. Pots have been biscuit fired to a thousand degrees. 
and they're ready for glazing now. They're a lot stronger at this stage. So we've got that, haven't we? I've got to get it on fairly thick, it's not like ordinary painting, you need to get several layers on. But it's a bit difficult to judge just how thick to get the glaze on. It needs to be thicker than ordinary paint, but not too thick that it's going to run in the firing. Is that dry now? Yeah, that's dry now. It's just ground up glass really, mixed up with water. So it all settles to the bottom of the bucket. So I have to stir it up quite frequently. Get all the little particles suspended in the water. Go get all the glaze mixed up from the bottom. Now that the pot's fired, it's quite a bit stronger and it's absorbent, so I can glaze the pot. The water soaks in, just leaves the glaze powder on the surface. These are kiln props to separate the shelves in the kiln. Each shelf stacks on top of there. There's three to stop it rocking around rather than four. So now the, the kiln's ready to fire, the final part of the process, the glaze firing up to 1160 degrees and then it'll cool down over 24 hours and we'll see what the result is of all the work. <laughs> so now we're going to fire the kiln up, we fire for 8 hours and then we can see the results. <laughs> <laughs>